Jennifer from Fiberflux. Welcome back to week three of the 2018 Holiday Fiberflux Crochet Along. We are in the midst of working on the Cozy Grannies Table Runner. This is a really beautiful and classic looking table runner where we've made some granny hexagons, did the join as you go, and today we're going to be finishing up our table runner and doing the finish work and making some tassels as well. Now, if you're just joining us, it's okay. The videos and the tutorials will be up forever, so you can really go at your own pace with this. So, so far we've talked in week one about the intro to the project and the supplies. Week two, we learned how to construct the basic hexagon shape, and then we learned how to join them all together. Now, if you're still unclear about how to position them, check out the Fiberflux uh, blog link below and you can see a chart on how to position all of your hexagons. So, like I mentioned before, today we're going to be focusing on the finish work and the tassels to wrap up our cow. This is the last week. So, I hope you all have had so much fun and let's get started and wrap up our table runner so you can get it right on your holiday tables. Okay, so I went ahead and got all of the motifs joined. And you can see the uh, layout that I did was one, and then two, and then one, and then two, and then one, and then two, and then one for a total of 10. Now, like I mentioned before, if you want your table runner to have a little bit more width, you could also add some hexagons to the sides as well. Or if you have a very long table, you could keep up the sequence that we have here and put two more, and then one, and then two more, and so forth. So that is the basic table runner. Now next week we're going to be doing the finish work with the uh, weaving in of all the ends and also we're going to be adding some pretty tassels to the end of our table runner as well. So stay tuned for week three and we're going to be putting the finishing touches on our table runner. Okay, so for today's tutorial, you'll need to not use your crochet hook today, so we're going to be putting that aside, but all you'll need is a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle. So today we're going to be weaving in the ends. Now I've already started weaving in my ends, but I left a few on here to show you. And we're also going to be adding a festive tassel to the end of our uh, table runner as well. So you'll also need the yarn with the tassel you'd like to use. Now I wanted to bring some more red through mine, so I chose to do the berry red for the tassel. However, you could do any color you like from your own table runner. And we're gonna make one together. I've already made one of them. But first, let's get these ends woven in so that we can move on to the tassels. Okay, so you're going to encounter two different types of ends as you um, go through this process. Now some of them you may have held along the edge as you worked and they'll be tucked in kind of like this one. Some of them when you finished on the outer edge, you'll have to weave those in with your tapestry needle. So for the ones that you wove in as you went along, you can just simply give them a, a very gentle tug and snip. For these, you'll have to grab your tapestry needle and weave in those ends. So go ahead and thread your tapestry needle and then you're going to go in to, now I have the taupe yarn here and I'm just staying in the taupe section because if I try to bring it through this green section, for example, um, actually, you know what? I'm on the right side. Let's go over to the back side. I had it flipped over. Um, you'll want to flip it to the back to weave in the ends to kind of go along those back loops. Uh, but what, like I was saying, you'll want to stay in the taupe section. You don't want to take this taupe tail through the green section because it'll kind of stick out and you don't want that. So go in one direction and then I like to come back in the other direction and you can go in between some of these plies to really lock that tail in. Now again, um, I think I mentioned this in week one that uh, this is a machine washable yarn so sometimes when you wash items um, that you've made sometimes the ends can pop out and you may just have to weave those back in but the washing machine tends to do that uh, okay so once you get all of your ends woven in we're ready to add some tassels so go down to one section here now I've already made one and I'm just gonna kind of put it aside here and we're gonna make the other one so tassels are super easy to make and there's a lot of fancy tools out there. I like to just make them with my hands. So what you're gonna do is cut two lengths of yarn, about 12 inches each, okay? 
just like that. Now, as a side note, if you wanna add some bells or pom-poms or whatever else, feel free to do that as well. I am a huge fan of tassels, so I pretty much put them on all kinds of stuff. Okay, so what we're gonna do to get our tassel nice and full looking, but not overly bulky, we're gonna let the yarn hang down the front of our hand and wrap it 40 times. So I like to count every time it goes around the top of my finger. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And as a side note, these center pool balls of yarn are super duper helpful for wrapping large amounts of yarn. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. So then what you're gonna do is just snip the yarn you might get some crumbs as you snip and wrap. And then what you're gonna do is, whoops, I snipped, but I didn't snip all the way. So fully snip your yarn. And then what you're gonna do is grab one of those strands of yarn that you cut a few minutes ago, and you're going to just take it, and while it's still in your hand, I like to do it before it leaves your hand, just kind of tuck it into that bundle that you've made and go ahead and pull that through, okay? So pull it up through so the ends meet. And then, holding the top, you can just kind of carefully slip it off of your hands, like that, and just try to be really careful to keep that bundle as intact as much as possible. You might lose a loop or two, but it's okay. Okay, and then we're just going to tie the top as tight as you can, not overly tight because you'll snap the yarn, but you want to get like a little bundle like this, okay? So then what you're going to do is take your other strand of yarn that you cut and lay your yarn onto your surface and then get your, get these uh, tails where you tied it up out of the way because you need those to tie it onto your project. Get everything nice and straight and then lay it down on the table like that. And then what you're gonna do is tie. Now I tie it about a third of the way down, a fourth to a third, so you have like a little uh, top part. See how I have like a little top part here? And then you're just gonna tie that nice and tight. Again, not too tight, because you can snap your yarn. And you'll notice that uh, one of your tails will go straight down and lay nicely, and one of them is gonna kind of stick up. So what you can do, because that one that sticks up drives me crazy. So I wanna just tuck that back under. I don't want it to stick up, it'll look messy. Okay, and then what I like to do is just kind of straighten everything out. You can just kind of position everything a little bit nicer. And then any of these that look kind of loopy or messy, you can pull them down a little bit and just neaten them up. Okay, then we're gonna take our scissors and flip your tassel over and you're gonna go in through all of these loops. Now, I have these little embroidery scissors that I love to use for yarn, but you might wanna use a larger pair <laughs> because there's a lot of loops here to cut and you wanna get a nice trim, but this is what I grabbed. So, and then you wanna kinda of pull everything down, look for any loops that remain, see if you can see any more hiding in there. There's one. Okay, and then what you can do is take your tassel and shake it out, because there's usually some crumbs when you trim yarn like that. So sh uh, shake that out, and then what you're gonna do is, I'm gonna slide this down just a hair so it matches my other one a little bit better. There we go, and then you can neaten that up however you like. I like to just get them nice and uniform looking. And then flip your tassel over, grab your scissors, and again, larger scissors are much more helpful than these, but that's okay, they'll still do the job. And then you're just gonna give it kind of like a straight across haircut, okay? So just get all that, shake it off again, get all that out of the way, 
And then if you have any long pieces, you can grab your scissors and just kind of trim that up, okay? So also, my other tassel, I still have that one that's sticking straight up. So I'm going to just put that through there. I like the all the bottom pieces to point all downward. And then, see if you have any long pieces on any of your tassels. And you can kind of just trim those up, give them a little haircut. Sometimes when you shake your tassel out, you can everything kind of settles down and you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our tassel to our project. And I'll, I have to say, weaving in a tassel is super easy. So just grab one of these tails, put it on your tapestry needle, and then in that corner space of that bottom most hexagon go in between there with your needle you can even do this with your fingers really and then just tie it right on okay we're just going to tie it right on and make sure your knot is secure okay so once you're and i'm still finding a couple little ones i like my tassels nice and uniform so once that's attached an easy easy way to do this because if we try to weave this red into the taupe it might not look as nice as we want it to look so I like to just go right down the center of my tassel just like that in case you missed that I'll do it one more time so put it on your tapestry needle and then go right down the middle grab the needle at the bottom and just pull it through and it'll be completely hidden Okay, so then we're gonna grab our scissors. You can just trim those two that we just pulled through. And that's it. Your tassel is now attached. Now again, you can kind of play around with these motifs. Hexagons make a really nice uh, circular doily as well. And you could put a tassel on each uh, point that it makes. You can really um, kind of customize this to your own decor. You could make a set where you could put this on maybe like a coffee table down the middle and then have circular ones on your end tables on either side. So I can't wait to see the photos. I've already seen so many cute photos of your projects as well. So that is the end of our tutorial for the holiday crochet long. Be sure and tag us, uh, hashtag Fiberflux Cow, because everybody loves looking at everybody's photos. So that concludes the 2018 Fiberflux Holiday Crochet Along. I hope you enjoyed this crochet along. Uh, the past couple crochet alongs we've done have been blankets. So this has been an uh, interesting change of pace and I love getting requests. So keep those requests coming. And I hope you had fun making the Cozy Granny's Table Runner. As always, be sure and hop on over to our Ravelry group where you can share photos of your finished pieces or your work in progress. You can share the colors that you've chosen and if you have some questions or you're stuck it's a great place to hop on over and there's so many people that are helping each other and asking questions and getting them answered so it's a great place to kind of hang out if you're working on the, the crochet along as well we do have some uh, year-long crochet alongs coming up now we have some that are wrapping up from 2018 the granny stash down project where we made a large granny square to use up some yarn and also the granny or the fiberflux temperature shawl project which is will be wrapping up towards the end of this month as well as we move into 2019 we're going to be having some more year-long cows as well as the seasonal cows so we'll, we'll have a spring cow a summer cowl, a fall cowl, and a holiday cowl. Same thing as this year. So I hope you enjoyed all the cowls this year, and there's going to be lots more coming up in 2019. So again, thanks so much for joining us with the holiday crochet along, and be, share, be sure and share all of those photos that uh, you take of your projects as well. It's so much fun to see what everybody's making. And Stay tuned for our next cow coming next year, and happy holidays, everyone. Have a restful, wonderful, peaceful holiday. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, everyone. Bye.